So welcome to another episode here at uh, Back to Classics. I'm on my way to the workshop in my 1981 Alfa Romeo GTV6. Uh, and we thought about talking a little bit about buying uh, classic Ducatis. Because that is a can be an unnerving experience buying any classic vehicle for that matter. And uh, well, what, what sort of tips and tricks are there? What uh, pitfalls are there and what you should really look out for? Because you have to remember that even though we very much like our uh, like and cherish our beloved classic Ducatis today, at some point it was regarded as just another used bike. And uh, a lot of things happened to these uh, used bikes. Uh, they were mended cheaply, uh, not the maintenance was done correctly, uh, perhaps even some youngsters fitted uh, an original bodywork or did other sort of upgrades that we are now confronted with, or fitted uh, ridiculously large valves to tune it uh, with no real power increase, of course. So, yeah, you know, lots of things can happen and a lot of things that you cannot see from the outside when purchasing a, a classic Ducati. So, um, let's dive in that a little bit deeper uh, about price, about the, uh, the quality that is, uh, that is found and uh, how you can build a collection and uh, really make a beautiful use of your classic Ducati or maybe more than one. So let's get back to uh, the workshop and I'll tell you a little bit more. Okay, so that brings us to the subject of uh, price versus quality. And uh, that is something that I have uh, noticed uh, a lot uh, where problems arise when purchasing a classic Ducati or any classic vehicle for that matter. Uh, not to blame them, but sellers always try to get the highest price uh, for their uh, offering, uh, which is a logical, would make sense, you know. So um, what they do is they tend to look on the market for similar bikes or at least similar models or model years and set the price for their offering at whatever the last bike fetched or was offered for. Not only uh, was the sales price never mentioned of course in, a, uh, in, a, in, a, in an advert, uh, but it's always the asking price. But all sellers will say that their bike uh, is in perfect condition and is 100% original and therefore justifies that high asking price. But buyers are to blame as well in this uh, area because they are, tend to get overwhelmed, uh, they uh, get carried away and they really would like to purchase that bike uh, and say so they overlook uh, or they tend to overlook quality issues with that bike. So what happens is that the, the value range of a certain model, uh, whereas the lowest value would be for the bike that needs the most attention or the most work and the highest value would be for the bike that is in a perfect 100% original or 100% uh, uh, restored condition, that value range becomes too narrow. So what happens is that the, uh, the bike that is being offered uh, that is actually in a very bad state, uh, either that is valued too high or there's, there's always someone willing to pay too much for that bike. Uh, and on the other hand, you see bikes that are wonderful in their condition that fetch a too lower uh, a price. So either that is a, uh, uh, well, it's a sort of a, a contradiction in, that, in the marketplace. And the result of that is that sometimes uh, buyers, uh, when purchasing a bike, thinking that it is 100% uh, original and in a very good condition, uh, soon find out that it is not the case. So uh, a lot of butchered parts or a uh, condition that is far from what was promised. Uh, and then we are confronted with that in our workshop 
quite often. So in that case, we are often the bringer of bad news when a bike is uh, presented to us uh, for a minor service, uh, but then we soon find out that a lot more is, uh, is, is needed. Uh, bikes that have been bought with the claim that the engine has just been rebuilt, that uh, meanwhile smoke like a chimney, or bikes that have been uh, bought with the claim that it was 100% original paint, uh, when we soon find out that the colors are not correct or that the bike had been in, a, in an accident, uh, all sort of things can happen. Uh, so we would really like to prevent uh, you from, uh, well, getting in that, uh, that, uh, that trap. Now, almost everything can be fixed, of course. We can, uh, the, 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 the biggest projects uh, we have brought to, uh, to a good end. Uh, so it can be done, but of course the costs uh, are running up quite, uh, quite fast. Uh, when more and more work is needed. So the, the, the price that you pay for the bike must reflect the quality it is in. And uh, if you logically aim for the best quality uh, for that bike eventually when you add it to your collection, uh, it should be, uh, 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 the, the purchase price should reflect the quality of the bike that it is in at that moment. So let's talk about the tips and tricks when really purchasing a classic Ducati. So, tips and tricks. It's important when buying a classic vehicle, any classic vehicle, is to make a plan and stick to it. So, uh, let's first uh, get that plan uh, set up before we take any action in buying anything. Uh, so, uh, making the plan with a few steps that we're going to explain right now. Uh, and the first step, step one, is to decide on the purpose of the newly to be acquired classic Ducati. And the purpose is quite important because, uh, well, what, what uh, thing would you like to do with the, uh, with the new uh, addition to your collection or maybe even the first uh, classic Ducati that you, uh, that you buy? Do you want to take it out on a sunny Sunday afternoon or uh, maybe you want to take it out for longer trips like a two-week holiday? Or maybe you're not uh, keen on driving it very much at all? Uh, or maybe you're after that one model that your uncle used to have in the 1980s uh, or in the 1970s uh, and you always fancied as a child. So um, a lot of different purposes, a lot of different uh, uh, approaches there. Uh, all are good, but decide on what the uh, purpose will be before you're actually going to buy one. Uh, now what we have here, for instance, a 750 GT, uh, very Great bike for touring, uh, great bike for uh, uh, the long stretches. You can actually take this out for two weeks uh, if it's all 100%. Uh, you can take it on a holiday uh, from here to the south of France, uh, north of Spain, uh, anywhere you, you would go on that bike. So it's a very good long tour. And Scrambler, on the other hand, is much more suited for, like I said, the sunny Sunday afternoon. Uh, going to eat an ice cream somewhere along, uh, uh, along the way, probably. Uh, a little less so on the long stretches, you're not going to take this on, on the highway. On the other hand, if you want a more uh, sport-oriented uh, bike, like a 750 Sport or a 900 Super Sport, uh, these bikes uh, are really racing bikes for the road, uh, and that's, why, uh, that's how they are intended. So don't expect to be able to drive that for days at a time, uh, because it is simply too uncomfortable. You can, however, take it out for, let's say, three or four hours at a time, which is fine. Uh, and you can simply very good, well use them for, uh, for that. Um, anyway, important thing is decide on the purpose before you actually purchase one uh, because uh, that will prevent you from uh, finding out things that you uh, uh, were able to find out beforehand and prevents you from buying the wrong uh, bike. So moving on to step two. So step two is the budget. Well, of course, winning the lottery will make uh, life uh, very easy for us Ducati enthusiasts because then we can buy whatever we want. But most people are limited in their budget, which makes sense. Uh, but when setting the budget, please keep in mind not only the actual purchase of the bike that you would uh, uh, like to add to your collection, but also the costs that are needed to get the quality up to the level that is desired. So if you want to, um, uh, for instance, buy a restoration project, the, the budget should incorporate not only the purchase of the restoration project, but also the restoration itself, including all the parts that, is, that are needed. Uh, perhaps uh, you need to uh, hire us uh, to do some work, or you can do it yourself. Anyway, the budget should be uh, set according to the project at hand. So now step three of our uh, purchase is to decide on the model. Uh, we have set a budget, which is a limitation. We have uh, discussed the purpose of the bike, which is another limitation. Uh, so we can now 
choose which model suits our needs uh, in the best way. Um, now you should really stick to the model. And what I mean with that is that sometimes you uh, see the 750 GT that has been converted into a 750 Sport. Uh, or a 860 GT that has been converted into a 900 Super Sport. Uh, and what you end up, in fact, is with neither any of these models. It is a, often a butchered uh, 860 GT or 750 GT, uh, non-original and, and therefore uh, not anything uh, close to the value of an original bike uh, in that category. But also you will not end up with a real 750 Sport or a real 900 Super Sport. Uh, so stay with original is always the best uh, investment, uh, definitely on the long term. Uh, as we will see on uh, see later on in this video as well. Uh, so decide on the model and make sure that to, to find the most original uh, model within that category uh, when we take it to step four. So step four is to search the market. Uh, we used to go through the Saturday newspaper on the, uh, and, and look up all the ads and, and try to find uh, the bike that we were looking for. But today we can use the internet to our advantage. Uh, depending a little bit on the, uh, the location where you're at, uh, but there are a lot of websites where uh, classic Ducatis are being offered, eBay, uh, like eBay, uh, Car and Classic, uh, Bring a Trailer. There's a lot of these uh, websites that I'm, I'm sure you know. Um, but we have to be careful not to get ourselves uh, carried away uh, and be too emotional about that, which is why we have taken the uh, steps before these, uh, before this one, and. Um, we can now really go about to assess the quality of the bike uh, that is being offered. So when looking at an ad, you should really focus your attention on, on the quality. Uh, get, to, get to know as much as there is to know about the, the specific Ducati model that you've decided on. You can use uh, our bookstore uh, for a lot of information. Uh, you can read up on, on all the little details, on all the little differences in model year and make sure to, to, uh, to get the bike that is most original. Again, the most original bikes are the most valuable, certainly over a longer period of time. So um, that's what should, we should be aiming at at this stage. Now, there are a lot of claims being made in, in ads uh, if you find them online. Of course, any seller will say that their offering is the, the best on the market and it is uh, well maintained in, a, in, a, in the best way. Uh, and we need to take these claims with a, with a grain of salt. So if a bike is uh, completely or partially restored, uh, be very careful to assess the quality uh, of the work that is, uh, that is done. A lot of restorers, uh, they cut corners, uh, not all things have been addressed, uh, the attention to detail may not be as it should be. Uh, there can be a lot of problems uh, arising, even with engines that have, been, uh, have had an uh, engine rebuild or something. Uh, really, really make sure that the, uh, that the bike that you're after is in the quality that is, uh, is it, as it is described in the, in the ad, but also at the level that you, you like it, or uh, if not, uh, how you should go about into getting that quality level up to, the, uh, up to what you, where you want it. Um, yeah, know as much about the bike uh, before you purchase it, and uh, it is always uh, good to remember that if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Uh, so uh, be patient, uh, never let yourself get carried away and be sure that at some point you will find that bike that you're looking for uh, in an advert uh, somewhere. So let's take it to the next step. Step five is to actually go for it. Once we have found a bike that ticks all the boxes and we have seen that the, uh, the bike is within the budget and the quality level is up to our uh, uh, desires or at least we have uh, uh, determined what needs to be done and uh, uh, we can stay within our budget with the work that needs to be done to that particular bike. Uh, well, after all the boxes are ticked, you should uh, not hesitate and actually uh, close the deal as soon as you can. Um, problem is perhaps for you to go visit the bike in person beforehand, but it's always best to do so. So if, if, that is, if there's one tip, always go to see the bike uh, in person, perhaps even drive it if that's possible. Uh, make sure that the that the bike is uh, that the quality as described is actually what it is, uh, because in person you can see a lot more than on pictures on on an internet uh, website. Uh, so always try to do that. But again, once the bike is up to your uh, liking and all the boxes are ticked, uh, don't hesitate and close that deal and get that Ducati home. So. 
step six, uh, the final step, uh, when you have uh, taken ownership of your new classic Ducati and brought it home, uh, you are now the caretaker of uh, that specific Ducati. Uh, it is part of the Ducati history, it is part of, the, of, of motorcycling history, and it will probably outlive uh, many people that are alive today. Uh, so uh, being caretaker, you should obviously uh, try to be the best caretaker uh, the bike pos possibly deserves. So that means getting the bike uh, in a 100% condition, uh, original, but also in terms of maintenance. Uh, make sure, uh, that's what I, I always do with any of my, uh, my classic Ducatis, uh, is to keep a log uh, where you write down uh, the mileage when you bought it, uh, to write down when you did the oil change, uh, but also to write down any uh, smaller things that you might find as you go along, uh, anything that needs addressing, any uh, parts that are uh, missing, perhaps original parts that are very hard to find, uh, these things. So I'll write it all down and, and try to uh, get things off that list uh, as, as we go along. Uh, what we find is that the bikes that, have, uh, that are used uh, the most are often also the best in terms of quality. Because they are used, thing, minor things get noted, get repaired, and uh, bikes that have been parked in uh, collections for, for decades without being driven, uh, a, a lot can go, can go wrong there. Uh, not so much wrong in the, in that, it, that it breaks down, but as soon as you start to use it, you will find all kinds of things that, that need addressing. So um, the more you use your classic Ducati, the better it will become. Uh, sounds like a, a contradiction, but it's really true. Uh, the, most, the bikes that have driven the most are often the best. So now uh, you have ownership of your classic Ducati, the one that you always wanted. Uh, so it's time to really enjoy it, take it out on the road, uh, drive it as much as you can. Uh, but let's dive into building a collection a little bit more uh, because there are some interesting thoughts on that as well. So how to go about uh, building a collection? Uh, it's of course uh, the dream of many Ducati enthusiasts to have uh, a collection of, of classic Ducatis all uh, beautifully lined up. Uh, if you have the financial room and uh, physical room to do that, uh, it is uh, of course a very good idea, as we can discuss later on. Of course your wife needs to be part of it, uh, that's uh, better than uh, uh, making a fight over it. Uh, but I will promise you uh, it will be a, a very good experience owning such a collection of, uh, of bikes. Why? Uh, well, what we have seen over the years, and please don't regard this as any uh, sort of financial advice because we're not in that, in that business uh, at all, but what we have seen over the years is that the, uh, the value of, of classic Ducatis has been increasing steadily. And it is our experience that if you, if you do it well, uh, and if you uh, purchase bikes that are in, in, in the right condition for the right price, if you restore them or have them restored, if you invest in them, uh, in the end, your investment will, be, will come back to you in uh, the value it will create over time. And uh, of, like I said, there's, there's no uh, certainty in that, of course. Uh, there's, there's no uh, financial uh, advice, but we have seen that if you, if you do it well, it doesn't have to cost you money. Of course, you have to uh, invest in it and money is tied up in it. But uh, that, that, that said, it, it is a good investment as it has, been, as it has turned out. Uh, but if you see it on a, on a, from, from, from a financial uh, investment point of view, always stick to originality. That is the most important uh, tip we can give you. Original bikes uh, in original condition, whether it's being uh, restored or not, but, but it has to be 100% uh, original in order for the resale value to be as high as possible. And that way you can also justify your investment in, uh, in the purchase, in the restoration in it, uh, uh, compared to, for instance, making a cafe racer out of it, or like we discussed before, making a 750 GT into a sport that it isn't. Uh, so uh, investment should be done uh, always to keep or, or to improve on the originality uh, and the quality of the bike. And if you do that, then uh, you end up with a bike that is actually uh, worth the investment. So. Um, that's some thoughts on, on how to uh, build a collection. So how can we help you? Uh, well, we, can be, we would like to be part of the complete process of uh, you uh, purchasing a, a new classic Ducati or a, a new addition to your collection. 
Uh, we, are often, we often work on bikes that have recently been, uh, been bought by, our, by one of our clients. And uh, like I said, we hate to be the bringer of bad news. So uh, uh, we would like to be involved in a stage before you actually purchase a uh, classic Ducati. So we can point out what we think is uh, uh, our problems with the bike, if there are any, and, uh, and, and how we should go about in uh, the next step of owning that classic Ducati. Um, well, also in the process of uh, searching the market, uh, we've been active in the classic motorcycle scene for, uh, for decades now. Uh, so we know our way. Uh, we have a lot uh, of uh, dealers, uh, motorcycle dealers in our network. Uh, we also work with uh, collectors. We have uh, clients that are collectors. Uh, so uh, they are also, there are always people selling, buying bikes. And uh, we always uh, try to uh, be an intermediary there as much as we can. Uh, so that is an area where we can help you. Then, of course, we can, like I said, advise you on the uh, bike that you would like to purchase. Uh, whether uh, we, we think uh, the price, the asking price is justified or not. Uh, what the quality actually is and how we can improve on that. Uh, what parts may be uh, available or uh, may be hard to find. Um, so that's an area where we can probably help you. Uh, and of course, uh, once you have taken ownership of that bike, uh, we can provide you with uh, parts, uh, advice on uh, how to uh, replace them, uh, why they should be replaced if, if, if needed, uh, and obviously in our workshop where we can uh, perform uh, maintenance jobs, uh, services, uh, rest restorations, complete, partial. Uh, so along the whole process, uh, we, can be, uh, we can be a part of that. So um, we are very much looking forward to being involved in your uh, uh, plans of perhaps uh, buying a first classic Ducati or perhaps uh, uh, getting a collection started or maybe expanding an existing uh, collection. Uh, so be sure to contact us. Uh, our details uh, can be found on our, uh, on our website, of course, and uh, we hope to be sure to help you uh, as best as we can. This time uh, we'd uh, like to uh, end this video. Uh, I think we have covered a lot uh, to, uh, uh, there's a lot to, uh, to chew on. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Toodledoki, see you next time.